Humane Society Executive Director get up and share with them us all that they're doing so that you can pass that information along to your clients and uh, know this great organization. So Melanie Sadek from Valley Humane Society. for me to share some of the exciting work that's being done by Valley Humane and then focus specifically on one program, um, one of my favorite programs that Valley Humane does and something that, that maybe not all of you even know that we do. It's pretty obvious that Valley Humane Society is an animal welfare organization. We're a no-kill facility, which means we only euthanize for the same reasons any of you would in your own home. So severe behavioral where there are risks to the community or really, really bad medical where there's just simply nothing else that we can do to help them. And so when animals come into our facility, we do all the medical. We have a um, medical director who volunteers all of her time to assist us. We've got our facility, 3670 Nevada Street in Pleasanton. Uh, please come and see us. Bring your clients to see us. If you know that they love animals, show them your local animal welfare organization. We're also pretty much a piece of art for the city. We've got two beautiful statues that were donated through the city's art project. We have another statue coming probably September, October. Uh, we had the local Rotary just made giant stepping stones in the back of the building that are paw prints and dog bones so that we could more easily get to our shed uh, without walking through the dirt. And, and inside, we have murals painted by local artists, like Debbie Wardrop painted a beautiful downtown scene in one of our feature rooms. And so it's a really nice place to bring people. And of course, I would tell you Valley Humane is a great place because I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't. And I love the organization. But we're also very well known and supported in our community. We've got support from Clorox, um, Pet Food Express, uh, Robert Half, I'm trying to think of all of our, uh, the leadership at Target, the department stores come into Valley Humane and do team building activities. We just got called from Pixar to start bringing our canine comfort pet therapy dogs into their facility to help do some stress release. Um, believe it or not, they're stressed at Pixar. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> but it's great. So they've asked us to come in and work with them. Last week, CBS came out and did a whole special on our uh, on our critter camp. And on Tuesday this week, we have NBC broadcasting live doing the weather from Valley Humane Society for the five o'clock news and the six o'clock news. And so though we're not this huge facility, we're, a, we're a kind of more of a boutique facility. We can help anywhere from 40 to 120 animals uh, at any given time. We've got a whole foster network, uh, but we're very well respected in the community. We've got uh, Jeb Bing, who I think just walked in, got to do a call out for Jeb. He told me he's going to harass me, so I figure if I talk him up here, maybe he'll be gentle. Uh, but with the Pleasanton Weekly supporting us, we've got our huge event coming up, Paws in the Park, and KPIQ is a sponsor, the Pleasanton Weekly is a sponsor. So again, we're a very well-known organization in the Tri-Valley, and we appreciate any support that you guys can give us. And then talk us up. We're great. People love their animals, and even if they don't have them, we're kind of one of those topics that everyone can appreciate, and so please come down to our facility and check us out. Besides the animal welfare opportunities we have, we, you know, bringing in cats and dogs and getting them new homes, we also work with low-income communities in the Tri-Valley, so we do food distribution. If somebody donates something to us and we can't use it, we redistribute it through our Animals program. And so we're doing this now in Dublin, Pleasanton, and Livermore. And we, once a month at each location, we go out and we partner with places like Open Heart Kitchen, try, um, Valley, Community, uh, Valley Community Church. I always say that one wrong. Uh, and we work with these families and we redistribute these donated items so that they can keep their animals in their home. We don't want them. There's plenty of homeless animals out there. We don't need anybody to have to give up their animal because they can't afford to take care of them. We also have an outstanding humane education program. We go into the local schools and teach children about the humane ethic. We have scouting programs on our campus where scouts come in and they learn about how to take care of animals. 
They get to read to the animals, which of course the cats and dogs love being read to. Uh, we've got our critter camps over the summer so that kids come in. And you know, one thing that you probably don't realize, and actually, you know, sometimes it takes people pointing out something in the reverse, because for me, we rely on volunteers. We only have 11 employees. And that most of our employees are all based in animal care, taking care of all these animals that are in our facility or in our network. But it got kind of reversed for me yesterday, and they said, did you realize that Valley Humane Society is probably one of the only opportunities for volunteer, well, one of the only opportunities for volunteerism for young people, for 16 to 18 year olds. It's very hard to find a place to have a 16 to 18 year old volunteer. And we're one of the largest for the entire community. We have over 400 volunteer opportunities at Valley Humane Society. And so we are very heavily supported through volunteer efforts within our community. And that entails uh, animal care, canine comfort pet therapy, the animals, animals distribution. Just in one week, it takes 120 volunteers to take care of the animals. And that's on top of all the paid support that we have. And so if you guys are interested, if you're interested in doing a team building activity with your office, Come and see us. We'd love to um, put you to work. We try to not just do dirty work. So your first visit, you're probably not cleaning the litter boxes. Maybe pulling some weeds. We kind of work into the really good stuff. Um, so what I really want to talk to you guys about today is one of my favorite programs, and that is Canine Comfort Pet Therapy. So does anyone just shout it out, the difference between a therapy dog and a service dog? You can't. Okay, I'm going to tell you. So, service dogs provide a service to the handler. So, if, I, um, if I'm a diabetic, I may have a dog that can smell my blood sugar. If I have seizures, I may have a dog that can tell me I'm going to have a seizure. And those dogs are working dogs. They are working for me to help me be safe. And those are the dogs that you usually, it says service dog on them on their vest, and those are the ones that you usually don't want to just go and touch. You want to ask for permission. Can I touch your dog? Because they're working. Therapy dogs provide a service to the community. They've got their handler. Their handler loves them, and they love their handler. But really, the handler is there to help the dog provide a service to all of you guys. And if you notice, we have two, service dogs, or two therapy dogs here today who have been providing therapy to anyone who walks over and touches them. Uh, we've had lots of people already come over and see them. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about this program, and then I'm going to invite two of our Canine Comfort Pet Therapy handlers to come up and share a little bit more so you don't have to listen to me drum on and on. Uh, our pet therapy program it has been around for quite a while. We have 165 handlers with their dogs that go out into the community. We're the exclusive partner at Veterans Affairs in Livermore, and so no other therapy dogs can go into the VA. And our handlers and their dogs go in and they visit patients that are living in that hospital. These are patients who cannot leave. They cannot have their animals. They're in a position where their family could no longer care for their medical needs, and now they are living in this facility. And so it means so much to these people that our handlers come in, and they come in almost every single day to visit with the patients, different dogs, and it's so, so appreciated. We also work with Hope Hospice. They are our local hospice provider, and we have dogs that go in and sit with hospice patients to provide just a little bit of comfort to them. We also have a partnership with hospice that if somebody has an animal in their home and they can't take care of them, our volunteers will go into the home and care for that animal so that the patient can enjoy the comfort of their animal until, um, until they pass away. And then if they have no resource for the dog or cat, that way you may able then find them a new home. So we have a really great partnership with Hope Hospice. In addition, we are allowed into all the schools in Livermore and Pleasanton. We're currently working to get into Dublin as well. We do finals weeks on the high school campuses to help reduce stress for the high school students while they're taking finals. Um, you'll hear from our handlers. We go into special needs classrooms. Uh, we also, Pixar, the reason Pixar just called is because they want the stress release. So hopefully, we'll get a team that can go out there every month and work with them. Uh, but if you guys have an office and you would like some visits from dogs occasionally, give us a call. We'd love to come and accommodate you. Um, the one thing I like about the program, and you know, the handlers are going to really talk to you about the program in more detail, but what I'd like to point out is 
The dogs are really the focus, but what makes me so proud about this program is really our handlers. The handlers are such incredibly special people. They're going into environments that, if we're honest, most of us don't voluntarily want to go. Um, going to the VA and working with these patients, it's not easy. It can be very sad. They're talking about their former life. They have pictures up on the wall. Uh, we have handlers that go into George Mark's Children's House in Hayward, which is an end-of-life facility for children, and they work with these families. I, I can tell you, I would never be able to go. Um, Paul Wankel, who's here, runs a camp, uh, a visitation to a camp for CARA, which is a camp for children who have suffered great loss in their life. Their parents have died, their siblings have died. Um, I can't go to that one either, even though he tries every year to get me to go. And so these are really special people. And we have 165 of these very special people that volunteer for Valley Human Society and serve this community. So I'm gonna allow Paul Winkle to tell you guys a little bit about some of the programs we're involved in um, and stuff that he specifically does. Paul Wankel is a former board member at Valley Humane Society. He has um, his awesome dog, Buddy, who will most likely come up here and just lay on the floor. Uh, he's very, very good at his job. So Paul, why don't you come on up? Opportunity, uh, Buddy. Is it? Uh, as Melanie mentioned, Buddy is a service dog. Uh, Buddy said, there. said a therapy dog. He should have said, said yeah, good boy. Yeah. Now, unlike service dogs, therapy dogs are not trained in the same way. They're not quite as disciplined. They don't need to sit. They don't need to do all of the things that service dogs do. Uh, most of all, what they need to do is provide affection to people that we visit. I thought it would be best to start with answering some of the questions that we generally get. Uh, and I won't, to save time, I won't give you the questions, I'll just give you the answers. <laughs> After all, this is a professional group, so you can probably figure out what those questions are. And I should tell you that these questions come from children and adults, and I'll see if you can determine which ones come from where. And by the way, we'll have Buddy out for another I don't know, a minute or so, and uh, then he'll be down and do what he does best. Buddy, well, we'll get into this. Uh, Buddy is, uh, Buddy, sit, sit. Buddy is uh, a 12 years old. He is a rescue dog. Um, we have no history on Buddy. We got him when he was three, and as far as we know, he had no history of being uh, a therapy or a trained dog for that matter. He is, um, um, and I didn't either, not a trained dog, but a trained therapy person. So we went through the Valley Humane Society program, certified buddy, and, um, and I went through the training as well. And then subsequently buddy got recognition through AKC, the American Kennel Club, as a uh, therapy dog through, uh, through AKC and also got certified as uh, some higher level, I guess, certifications through AKC. He has spent 1,500 hours of service. So he's uh, spent quite a bit of time. We've spent quite a bit of time. Uh, Buddy likes to eat dog food. And he also likes human food. Uh, we can spend hours talking about this and have, in fact, with, uh, as you can imagine, with the kids. Um, he also um, does not like milkshakes, potato chips, and junk food. Uh, at least that's what I say to make the parents' lives just a little bit easier when, when they get home. Um, let me share with you some of the specific programs that we work on. Uh, Melanie mentioned uh, we've got a wide range of programs at Valley Humane Society. And when we first started, we've done a little bit of everything, including work with nursing homes, care facilities, 
I worked with a psychiatric ward for a time. But Buddy and I had gravitated more toward programs involving children. He seems to be very suitable, and if he could talk, I think would tell you that he likes the exposure to kids. A uh, few specific programs. We do a work, we do work with the Pause to Read program at the library in Pleasanton, and Valley Humane Society has uh, affiliate, is affiliated with locations in uh, Livermore, Pleasanton, Walnut Creek, Castro Valley, Danville. Uh, and all of those programs have library programs. For those of you who are not familiar with the program, uh, or how that uh, concept works, we attend the library and children, either children that are recommended by teachers as needing some additional reading experience, attend and read to the dogs. Uh, Pleasanton is the largest program, the oldest program, having been in place for over a dozen years. We have 40 kids that go through every week during the school system, and they spend, there we go, and they spend, <laughs> they spend about 20 minutes reading to the dog. Uh, some of the kids are referred by reading specialists, some of the children just want to read more, and some of the kids, frankly, just want to see the dogs. For whatever reason, it's a, it's a good program. So we've been doing that for a long time, we continue to do that, and you'd be amazed that uh, as long as we've been doing it, it continues to be incredibly rewarding. There are a lot of stories, if we had time, I would share some stories with you. Uh, the other program that uh, Melanie touched on is a program called Camp Erin, which is the program for bereavement children. Uh, or children who have lost a loved one. And that organization, CARA, is the sponsoring organization based out of Palo Alto, and they work not just with children, but with adults who have suffered a loss in their lives. This is, um, I guess, a good news, bad news scenario. Each year, we attend with a dozen teams of canines and handlers, and they have up to 100 kids at this camp age 6 to 16 who have suffered incredible loss in their lives, uh, in their early lives. And uh, that we spend four or five, uh, the camp is four or five days. We spend a better part of an afternoon with them uh, to, uh, to get their minds off of, of their loss. Uh, the camp is a general camp. They enjoy normal camp activities in addition to professional counseling and uh, again, exposure to the dogs. And they continue to say at the end of that camp that the dogs are very, very special, a very special part of that. Uh, one last program here in Pleasanton is what I'll refer to as the Alicell program. It's a uh, program with uh, Alicell School where we meet every Friday with a special development uh, class or special needs kids. Uh, the teacher there, Christine Fitzsimmons, and by the way, if you haven't met Christine, she is a, a marvelous teacher. She works with kids that are in grades one to five. Uh, they have a variety of learning disabilities. They might have autism, things like that. Uh, she has reported that kids uh, have come a long way as a result of exposure to the dogs. Some children who are nonverbal have become much more communicative. They feel comfortable with the dogs. They're able to ask questions, and, and we spend a great deal of time answering questions about why the dog likes ice cream or doesn't, and what we did over Thanksgiving, and what Buddy did over Thanksgiving, <laughs> Christmas, and Halloween, and a lot of those kinds of things that seem mundane, but actually are very important to the children. So those are a few of the programs. I don't want to take any more time, but I, I, I could go on and on. I would tell you that, as Melanie touched on, we get, this is a win-win all around. The people, the kids uh, that we deal with, certainly I like to think derive considerable um, uh, benefit from the dogs, but as handlers, we can't, we're anxious to do this. It is unbelievably rewarding, and I think uh, Buddy, if he could talk, would tell you that uh, he loves it too. So thank you very much.
Okay, we're running out of time. So I, I'm going to have Liz and Angel come up next and just tell you very quickly about how to get involved in this program. Liz Stewart is one of, we have a team of handlers that really certify new handlers, and Liz is on that leadership team. Hi, so, uh, this is Angel. She's nine and a half. She's a Rhodesian Ridgeback. Um, there aren't very many Rhodesians in the program. Oh, sorry. There aren't very many Rhodesians in the program. There are tons of the Goldens in the labs. So you'll see in the Pause to Read program, there'll be a whole section of Goldens and labs in one corner. <laughs> um, so in order to get involved in the program, if you think your dog is a perfect fit, then you send in the application to the office and then they'll turn them over to me and I notify you when the next orientation is. And we do have one coming up in September and you attend that orientation, find out all about the program, what's involved with it, where we visit, and then give you a chance to ask any questions that you might have. And then we have you sign up for an evaluation and the evaluations, we do those right away uh, the next two weeks after that orientation, we have those. And I will send you out an email prior to that, letting you know exactly what tests we do. Uh, for example, the VA, Valley Care, George Mark Children's House, any places that there might be medication that's dropped, we want to make sure that your dog has a good leave it. And so we'll put treats down on the floor and make you do figure eights and go around those in a squeaky toy. <laughs> So we, it's okay if they're interested and they notice it, but you just don't want them to pick it up. And then also a good um, uh, handling skills, making sure that you have your dog on the right side when you're passing another person as if you're at the park. So we'll have you go towards your other person, which is usually one of us. With, I have Angel there, or Jocelyn brings Dave, or Shelby, or Veronica. She has three in our program, where you want to make sure that your dog stays on your right, you put them in a good sit or stand stay, and you don't want them to cross over and interact. Because when we go to any of the facilities where there are multiple teams, we want them to make sure that they're respectful of that other team, and we don't socialize. It's all about visiting the children or the adults. In particular, we go to a, a Futures Explored in Livermore. It has uh, adults with disabilities. So it, she has a favorite um, who has cerebral palsy. And we lay down, which is her favorite activity <laughs> as buddies. And, and Danny gives her treats. So they also have to be gentle to take a treat. And Danny can only hold the treat in between her knuckles. And so you have to make sure that they barely touch and she is wonderful at it and is after you complete the evaluation process and you pass then you would do a background check and then get the vest turn in their certification of health because they all have to have their vaccinations current and then they're good to go to mentor visits and then we will take you to different facilities, uh, pause to read or pause to heal, one of each preferably so we can see how you interact with the uh, children and adults and, and specifically where you're interested in going. You'll tell me I would but like to focus in this area. And then you're basically on your own to visit where you like. And we send out a facility sheet and we have at least 30 facilities, if not more, that you can go and visit throughout your you know, six and a half to 10 years of volunteering through the <laughs> Canine Comfort Program. So that's it in a nutshell. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Liz. Thanks, Angel. Valley Humane also, we provide insurance for the handlers, so that's why um, if they're going to have a vest on, they're involved in a canine comfort activity. Uh, so you should not see this vest going into any grocery store or restaurant. Uh, they are supposed to wear it when they're actually engaged in therapy work. So that's the Canon Comfort Program. In closing, I just want to thank you guys so much for allowing us to come in. I always like hearing from nonprofits because you get to find out things about them that, that you don't usually get to know just on the surface of hearing. So I hope all of you learned a little bit about us that's unique and different. 
Um, and I would like to invite you guys to work with Valley Humane. Whether, again, it is just simply a visit, um, being a sponsor at Paws in the Park, we have our huge fundraiser coming out September 27th. It's a dog walk and animal festival at Amador Valley Community Park. And it's from 10 to 3 o'clock, September 27th. There's sponsorship opportunities. You can put a team together. You know, like, I think that Jeannie needs to put a team together and challenge somebody to see who can raise the most money. I know she's very competitive. <laughs> So um, thank you guys so much again. And you can go to valleyhumane.org for any information about the organization. You can always contact me. I've got business cards if anyone wants to, to ask me anything. And I don't know if we even have questions at time, so we'll leave it up to Jennifer. Questions? Any questions? Jean? Yes. It isn't a question. I just want to make a comment. When I was originally on the board of directors with Valley Humane, I heard about pause to read. Somehow I couldn't get that to fit in my head anywhere. It seemed absurd. It just didn't make any sense to me until I went to see it. It is amazing to watch the kids interact with those animals. And the animals look at the kid like they understand every word they're saying. It's an amazingly good program, very heartwarming. And I got lucky and went on Halloween. Oh my God, was that fun. That was, the dogs were dressed up, the kids were dressed up. So it, it, all the programs are fabulous. That one surprised me how meaningful it was. Yeah, I actually, my first time I ever went, I actually cried a little. <laughs> I was just, yeah, it was just so moving to watch. And even the handler interact with the children. Like the whole combination is really outstanding. Any other questions? I have one, one question that came out of the, uh, when I announced you guys yesterday at the Livermore Marketing Meeting. Um, somebody had asked if you guys do any type of boarding where uh, the, one of the family members is going to be moving in like three or four months and they have nowhere to place the dog uh, for that intern until she actually moves. So do you guys do anything like that or do you refer them to anywhere? You know, we don't do that. We do refer them out. The only reason we don't do it is, of course, we do have the space at Valley Humane, but um, our primary objective is to pull animals out of municipal shelters so they don't get euthanized. And so for every room that we have filled is one less animal that we can't bring in. And so that's why we don't offer it. But we do refer to different groups that will do it. So you've got um, local vets that have pet ho like pet hotels associated with them. Uh, but I have to say, if there's anyone who's interested in starting a nonprofit, uh, that is something we do get asked quite a bit, or just people who are looking for even a foster network for temporary housing when people are going through certain kind of obstacles in their life and they don't want to give their animal up, uh, but just not something that we can do. Uh, when the kids uh, communicate with the people and the dogs and all this and when they read to them, do they show them the pictures? Do they try to explain to these kids, what's, or the to kids, the to the dogs? They do. They do. So let me tell you really, so it's a 20 minute session and the kids don't get to see the dogs until the doors open. So as soon as the doors open, they're assigned a dog. They go, they sit down, they meet the dog, they meet the handler. Um, it is not unusual for the dog to immediately walk over and put their body in the kid's lap. Um, it's super cute. Sometimes the kids will be reading to the dog and the dog will fall asleep and the child will say, are you sleeping? <laughs> We're just so insulted. Um, but the positive side is that reading to these dogs actually reduces or uh, it, it uh, releases chemicals in the child's brain that associates positive kind of reading activity with this experience. And so when children leave, they actually want to read outside of that environment. And so frequently in school and at home, there's so much pressure to read that it's being associated with a negative activity all the time. And so this really provides a positive experience for the kids. And we get a lot of great feedback from parents that say that it changed their child's life and associated this activity with such a positive experience. And I'm going to also say it doesn't work with your dogs at home. <laughs> it, has, it only works at this because I have three children and one of my kids, I'm like, we've got dogs at home. Why aren't you reading to the dogs? It, you have to read to a, a dog that you don't know. Um, I don't know why. All right, thank you guys so much. Thank you. I